Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Praetorian. And Jinx here. And welcome back to Disco Elysium on the PlayStation 4 Pro. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on with our investigation. I think we ended off talking to, to Gart here again. So uh, let's go ahead and use the phone. And get on the radio. Yeah, we're going to get on the radio and make a few phone calls. Actually, I think there's only one thing we can currently do. We can call... Sylvie? Sylvie, yeah. The the woman who... We want to know, one, if she's the one who called the police, because we still don't know who called the police. And then also just get her... Uh, uh, her interview. See what she knows. So we do that here in the car. I don't think we've used the radio yet in this playthrough. I don't think so. Inside, you see a set of steering. The frequency tabler lights up, and the green button label, the soft purr. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Okay, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna talk to her, see what all she's seen, and I might be a little bit messed up on what all we have and haven't done, guys, because Jinx and I actually both started <laughs> our own playthrough in this last night. Uh, we haven't played very far, but I have gotten further than what we played so far in the, the series. Honestly, this game, in my opinion, is really not the best for a Let's Play. This is really a game you, you stream, I feel. Yeah, true. That would be better on a stream. Yeah. Uh, first of all, it's kind of a nightmare to edit these videos because you got to, you know, turn up the volume for, you know, all the parts for, you know, the, the game is talking, which happens con constantly. So I have to turn up the volume for every single little section, make a cut there and turn up the volume for that specific part. Uh, so it, it's just kind of a pain in the butt, you know, just moving it around and stuff. Uh, so... It's. I feel like it would be best for a, a stream over over a let's play, but that's how we're doing it right now. Uh, but do forgive us if we've mixed anything up because we did start our own playthroughs. Very different characters, though. We're both playing as a a more psych psyche crazy person. Yeah, crazy person <laughs> essentially, which I've never played that way before. Which so it's, I don't think I'm crazy. It's very different. <laughs> it's like a very different style. Like everything changes. Like I knew that the personalities that popped up and talked to you would be different. Mm -hmm. What I didn't know was like how even the narration of like what's going on yeah, changes. Yeah, changes everything. Yeah, everything does, and like all these items are talking to you. So like you got like your clothes be talking to you, like you know a wall starts talking to you. Like it's it's really crazy just how different items talk to you. you talk to dead bodies, or you think you do anyway. Uh, so let's go ahead and give Sylvia a call, see what she has to say. She might have reported a murder. Of course. What is her number, officer? Yes. Hold on. Her number is. 005 1944 298. Received. Hold on, officer. Lieutenant Kitsuragi slowly begins to tap a little rhythm with his right foot. Quite a lot of time has passed. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yes, hello? Oh, right. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? There is no resentment in her tone. She wants you to ask her out. No question about it. No, not me. What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the Union already knew about the court. No one calls the police. The Union would get angry. You know... What the Union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. Legally, no. In reality, yes. Martinez is de facto policed by the Dock Workers Union. I... I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. Push her further. Show her the error of her ways. The other people who live around here. Local people, I... I didn't want trouble. You don't live here. You don't understand. Squealing is frowned upon here. Everything is dealt with, well, by the Union, internally. Please, I just didn't want any trouble. 
You do? Oh, what else can I do for you? No, sorry, I don't. <clears throat> Not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone, or the one on the coast. So the Union has a phone, and there's one further down the coast. Got it. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Yeah, go on. You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm... not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Why not? I... uh... Let's just say I left because I needed to get away from someone. What? No, why would you even think that? Please, don't bring Gar into this. It's none of your business. I already said I don't want to talk about this. You're messing everything up again. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. No, she doesn't have a problem with you. It must be someone else she's angry about. Some other guy, like Gart. Trust me, you wouldn't want to be the guy here. You know how it is. Yak, yak, nag, nag. No, you're the guy. You're Lieutenant Love, matchmaker extraordinaire. Help the poor girl out lest she turns into a spinster. What misogyny? I'm just telling things the way they are. Can't a man be honest in his own head anymore? You have to act, Lieutenant Love. You have to calm that hysteric down. Tell it you've got everything under control. Then go and have a little boy's talk with God himself. Think you can do that, Lieutenant Love? Okay, so... <laughs> We can say, are you still there, kiddo? Listen, I've got everything under control. It's so kind of like a father-style thing. Or you can say, daddy's going to take you on his lap, little darling, which is not creepy. a father-style thing. And it's like, yeah, that's creepy. Or please know, I don't want to say any of those things. <laughs> Refuse the love quest, although it's wonderful. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> I feel like we got to do the love quest. We'll go through this route here, unless you think we shouldn't jinx. Yeah, we can do the first option. I, I can't do it in my playthrough, my current playthrough, because I succeeded in this empathy. Yeah, me too. Like, none of this conversation at all was what I had with her. Yeah, it's a completely different uh, story, honestly. The whole story is different based on the, the character you're playing, which is really cool. I feel like in order to see everything, you need to play the game probably three or four times. It's weird that empathy is Lieutenant Love, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, your empathy is different based on whether you have it or not. True. We don't have any empathy oh, for others. Okay. So it's, it's our it lack sucks. of empathy. Gotcha. Yeah, we suck at it. Sense. Where if we were better at it, like when you and me succeeded in our own playthroughs, mm -hmm. empathy was completely different. You realized you're a shitty person. You <laughs> made her feel like shit. She doesn't want to talk about it with you because you're the problem. You, you know, I don't remember what all you did. Uh, what didn't you do? Yeah, you were pretty horrible. She kind of gives you a long list of all the horrible stuff you did while she was working there. And that she quit because of you, because you were such a horrible tenant. <laughs> like, you were really, really bad. It's a bummer you guys didn't get to see the full list of everything we did. Yeah, because it was a lot. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Uh, but, you know, that's that's the playthrough, guys. Uh, so I think we have to do the, the love quest. <laughs> so we're going to do it this way, because this way is kind of disgusting. So I don't think we should do that. That's Yeah, we will do this one, guys. No. What? Oh, oh, God. Please, just stay out of my life. What? What is it? Call was dominated by the other party. Anything else, officer? It's on. The love quest is on. Too late, everyone. It's on. Take it to Gart now. 57th, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers. A ring. Okay, so we are on the love quest, guys. <laughs> so I want to say, gotta stretch your rooster self over to Gart. Yep. So I'm back off your girl. <laughs> our mission quest is talk to Gart, Lieutenant Love. That's what we're referring to ourselves as. 
Gart plus Sylvie equals question mark. Something's going on here. You need to help a brother out with his love woes. Go to Gart and give him some solid advice. Tell him how it is with women. <laughs> uh, you'll also see over here on the right, uh, you know, those are our, like our responses. You know, how many times we've made those responses. So we made a super car cop, superstar cop once, uh, made that response once. We did a boring cop response once, communist and ultra liberal once, good cop slash bad cop twice. Uh, and then, of course, the, the stats that we had found out uh, from our, uh, you know, our case file thing. And and that's important because a lot of characters will respond to you based on the number of responses you made for each of them. So if you, you know, are constantly saying sorry and you're a sorry cop, then other people will refer to you that way and say that you're you're always saying sorry. And they're like, oh, you came in here bumbling. You said sorry like 15 <laughs> times for what you did. So it also impacts your past which I think is interesting. The way you're acting before the game started is based on your responses. There. And I think the good cop, bad cop is like a negative or a positive type thing. Uh, so we're technically in the good cop right now because we're plus two. Uh, so we did have the ability, because of our logic, to ask her why she was gardening in March, which is kind of a strange time to be doing some gardening. Uh, although I, I know a lot of people do start the know, gardening like, in March. You can start gardening in March. You can start. In the greenhouse. It, it depends on the season, but yeah, she is in the greenhouse as well, so I guess that wouldn't have I mean, that I effect. I guess it's a busted greenhouse. Mm -hmm. But yeah, because of our logic, we can ask that. In my playthrough, my logic was too low to even be able to ask about this, which I don't want to spoil anything, so I'll just I'll just talk to her. Hello again, officer. Well, uh, this might be the last snow we get. At least I hope so. Snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything green up in the spring. At least that's what my grandma always told me. Yes, think about the cute grandma, not the weird snow. Nitrogen and sulfur mostly. And whatever factories and aerostatics exhale too, I guess. Stop looking at her. Look around. What do you see? That's right. And the canal, the bookstore, the harbor gates. This is a great vantage point for keeping an eye on you. No, of course not. I don't understand what this is about. The kid did this right? The red-haired rat? Can't say a sentence without or kipped? He's always giving me trouble. Maybe you shouldn't be. I mean... You do your job, but that kid is beyond help, and he certainly won't help you. You've been resting here for quite a while, haven't you? Yes, I'm tired. I understand. The RCM isn't welcome here, and the locals want to keep an eye on us. There's silence, the smallest of smiles. That's okay, miss. Do what you have to do. I think we're done here. Let's go. So now I know that this woman here is most likely keeping an eye on us. I thought she was nice. Yeah, if you have, if you don't have this this higher intellect, then you won't be able to question her and realize that she might be up to to something. Uh, what we what she's up to, we don't really know, or who she is, or or what's going on, or who put her up to the task of watching us. We Probably still don't drug dealers. We something. still don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to wait and find out. I do want to see our experience points. We're at 45. Okay, so we don't have a level up yet. So I guess we'll talk to Gart and continue on this love quest. We're going to fight him. I thought we were trying to give oh, him advice. Oh, that's right. We're mentoring him. Yeah, I think we're trying to give him advice. We took the more... Not yeah. so good with the ladies. Yeah, we didn't go with the creepy direction, which we could have went that way too. And then the love quest becomes something different, I think. I haven't done that. But I assume the love quest becomes more like a competition thing. Kind of like... Uh, you know, we were trying to intimidate him, scare him, I get back off my woman. Now we're going to be friends mm -hmm. and be besties. Maybe, but maybe if we help him enough, he'll uh, like cut down how much we owe him. <laughs> uh, in my playthrough, I don't know if you tried to do this, Jinx, there was an option to like try and sneak off when he mm -hmm. mentions that you owe money. So I tried that and I failed. And so my character like goes sprinting across here and then he like does a slow motion backwards jump and then like flips him off and then he crashes into the old lady in the wheelchair. Oh wow. Yeah, but then because I'm so Did she die? No, luckily the, the the chair takes the brunt of the force and you get banged up, lose a little bit of health. But yeah, he felt so bad for me because I was so pathetic that he cut down how much I owed him. What? 
Yeah, because he felt bad for I'm me. I'm pathetic too. <laughs> Can I help you? God. Oh, but he should be. Lay it on him. So this is our options. Yeah. Because it turn out turns out she's a whore who likes to ride the cock carousel. Or, but I don't want to lay that on him. Or don't I have anything else? <laughs> like a back button, for example. <laughs> there is only one option. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a bit much. I thought Gotta we were trying ride to... the cock carousel, I guess. <laughs> we're going to say this one for right now. Are uh, we? Yeah. I mean... We are Lieutenant Love, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> but we're trying to set up love, not a, you know, not a one-time thing, right? I guess. I just feel like we could Are be we a little bit more. Kind of love? I don't know. I, I feel like we... love. <laughs> let's try this and see what happens. We might not have a choice. We might get stuck with just these two. Of course you do. This was your plan all along. This is how you fix it for them by answering the woman question. Yeah. So as you see, we we got <laughs> stuck with just this. There's option. no back button. We have to to say this. We don't even have the choice to say, "Is there no back button now?" So yeah, we have to go with this. Wonderful. It is. It's wonderful. What? What does that mean, cock carousel? Does it mean you talk to her? What else did she say about me? What else do you need? Okay, so what do we want to say here? Shit, I don't know. Say this, that was roughly it. You don't want to know. Or yeah, she said that she likes the cock carousel very much. So fun. And then depict a carousel of cocks going merrily around. <laughs> I feel like... That was roughly it. But I kind of, you know, depicting a carousel of cocks going merrily around. Is that our great. cop, though? I feel like that's not our cop. We'll go with this one. The man leans his hands on the counter and sighs. His head drops between the shoulders, heavy and defeated. She broke the bird, you know. The great skewer. I found it on the ground with a broken wing. On the morning she left. I should have known. It was her way of telling me to piss off. I should stuff it up my ass. Or you broke the bird. It can also be that. I think Sylvie even. Yes, the bird is connected to this. It's a symbol of hope, and she broke it. Okay, so we can say, or, you know, maybe I broke it, which seems most likely. We, I broke it. You can say, yeah, man, <laughs> signals, mixed signals. This is classic, classic cock carousel behavior. <laughs> we do know that we broke it. You know, if you had gone the other route where she lists all the things you do, you are the one who broke the bird. Uh, or we say broken bird feathers, not knowingly. This is all part of the mind fuck on the cock carousel. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we should go with that one. Huh. Cock carousel. I think I understand now. That's what they ride until, like, 39. They ride the cock carousel until the clock runs out. Here, have the rest. Now, let me have a drink and think about this shit for a moment. On my own. And there we have it. Isn't that beautiful? Another situation fixed by Dr. Love. And there you go, guys. Now Dr. We're a Love. Doctor. Yeah. Yeah, we're not just Lieutenant Love. We are Dr. Love. So, yeah, we fixed the situation. We solved it. I'm sure that this is not done yet, guys. Uh, I've never done this quest here. So, this is a bit new to me. Uh, but yeah, clearly we're doing this a, a different way. I'm interested to see how it goes. I'm not seeing anything else in that quest line, but I think it'll pop up again a bit later. I don't think there's anything else we need to do here. Uh, we could talk to her more. Oh, she gives you a free pen, by the way, guys. Yeah. Yep, if you say the right things. Got a happy green froggy pen. Yeah, she'll give you a pen, and then you don't have to borrow the lieutenant's pen, which, as you guys may recall, he does not want to... <laughs> He's salty about it. Yeah, he does not want to let you borrow the pen. Mm -hmm. Have you gotten the bag yet, Jinx? No. You want me to show you where it is? No. <laughs> I mean, I guess we could use a bag. Yeah, I mean, I feel like... like bottles. Yeah, I feel like we should go get the bag. It's not that far away from here. You gonna clean up the streets? Yes. I'm gonna clean up the streets. And then maybe next episode, if we don't have time this one, we'll, we'll see if we have time this one. Oh, these streets need a lot of cleaning. 
Uh, so let me talk to this thing here. This Postla Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. The box seems happy. Eat shit, pig. Fucked by the coon. And sent G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore and best set mailbox also. The mailbox does not know how to man up. It is an inanimate object. <laughs> so yeah, in there, mailbox. Yeah, so we can talk to to all the the items and pat them on the head if we want to. Uh, you notice it just started snowing just out of nowhere here. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah, the is weather is Colorado? constantly changing. <laughs> yeah, it seems kind of Colorado-ish. <laughs> oh, okay, these are the different books. We're not gonna jump into this can of worms just yet, guys. Uh, the bookstore and everything that's around that surrounds that. We're gonna wait. Although I do want to see what this this red. Thought bubble. Yeah, if I can just get it. Get to... out of the way, Kim. It seems only Why pop you up. My butt? Oh, there we go. <laughs> this book appears to be erotica, but without actual erotica. What? Yeah, I don't know why you. Okay. I guess we can talk to this. Coin operated viewer has been banged up and operable. Better watch your mouth around me, boy. You hear the dis distant squall of seabirds? <laughs> Here's the bag, right here, next to this guy. And now we've got the bag. So that's what you need in order to pick up the items. Uh, you have to equip it. Is it a barf bag? It's just the he store bag. Look like he feels so well. Now we did get our first thing of alcohol. Remember, we do have a quest to drink the alcohol. Uh, one really interesting thing about the alcohol and the cigarettes is that they're the only ways to improve your base stats. Uh, so the alcohol here, you'll see, increases the physique. And it cost one of our morale points. And thus that would increase the physique from three to four, meaning all of these would get one point. Oh, okay. And you can do that with the cigarettes as well, but the cigarettes, they, t they take away one health and they increase your intellect. And so you can use those, you know, right before... I found in my first playthrough, I'd use a pack of cigarettes. I'd carry a pack of cigarettes around with me everywhere. And then I'd use cigarettes anytime I needed more intellect for something. And it would cost you health, so obviously you need to have an abundance of health to be able to heal yourself. But, uh, yeah, it's it's one of the tools you have. Uh, I didn't drink at all in my first playthrough. I tried to, like, sober up my character, so I didn't let him drink anything uh, the whole playthrough. I just smoked the, the cigarettes. I'm not sure what we're going to do in our playthrough yet, but we do have a quest to drink, and that would make electrochemistry quite happy if we decided to do that. Plus, just you get... going to do what feels right. You get some skill points for it, too. You're just going to do what feels right, Jinx. Yeah. Your character's going to be <laughs> <laughs> doing <Drunk>. drugs. <laughs> you're going to be a drunk, or are you just going to do everything? Probably everything. It's disco, baby. Disco. Oh, we need to equip the bag. We didn't do that yet. Uh, so you're going to have two, thing in, two things in your hands. Uh, uh, apparently, you can't pick which hand you're going to have it in in the console version. In the PC version, you drag everything over to uh, to the slot you want it in. And so you can pick what you're going to have in your left hand and your right hand. I've already found this to be kind of irritating because let's say you have two items in your hand mm -hmm. and then you want to switch out one of them for a third. You don't get to pick which item you're going to switch out. So it requires you to like... Oh, kind of mess with it until yeah. you get it in your hand? Yeah, until you get the two items you want in your hand. Like, let's say you need the flashlight in your hand with the bag or whatever. Yeah, and, you know, you got to mess with it a little bit. So it's, it's just not as smooth as it is on the PC, unfortunately. Uh, but now that we have this in our hand, you'll notice that oh. there's different items now on the ground that weren't highlighted before that we can now pick up. Can we sell all this shit? Yeah. So when you go to the grocery store, there's a little corner store here in town. Mm-hmm. And I guess we can run over there Are real quick. Yeah, dig in the trash. Yeah, we'll dig in all the trash cans, and now we can pick up all the, the bottles there and sell them. They're not worth very much. I think each one's worth like 10 cents or something oh. like that. So you need to pick up a lot of trash. But I'll tell you what, guys, you can make like 20 bucks in this game from picking up trash. Oh. <laughs> 20 bucks is a good chunk of money in this game. And get you a few, few things you wouldn't have been able to get before. This is the corner store right here, Jinx. So we go in there to sell our crap. But I don't think we're going to go in there this episode, guys. We're going to pick buy up... buy our broken models? 
Yeah. Well, they have a machine you put it in. Oh, it's like a recycle machine. Yeah. yeah and that's why you get like 10 cents for recycling, essentially. It's the store, uh, kind of the company gotcha. that wants the bottles. True. So they can reuse them or yeah, so sell they can them reuse them to someone else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As and a kid, we used to recycle cans, go around picking them all up. You can get a lot of. I kind of feel like the cans are randomly placed a little bit, by the way. A lot is for kids that wouldn't hold the weight of grown man. You could try. So the thing I wanted to do here in this episode is see if we can get this to reveal itself to us. Because in my playthrough, my first one, I got it open. And the second one, I, I couldn't. Uh, so we'll see if this character can. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Because it's nice and orderly, well-laid pallets, easy on the eyes, rhythmic pattern, calms your mind. Mam- All right, so we failed. <laughs> so that's unfortunate because it's actually really important to get in there. It's just a pallet, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can recheck it uh, if we ever put any points in that skill. But otherwise, we won't be able to go through there, which is a shame because there's another way to get through there. Uh, but it's a little bit more difficult to get through. So that's actually really unfortunate. So far, we have not had good luck with the, the rolls <laughs> in this one. In mine, I was able to to interact with the body without the salts, even with a 28% chance or something like that, and I'm, that's not even a skill I'm good at. And I could interact with the body without the, the salts. Uh, so I got lucky, a very lucky roll. Uh, but in this playthrough, because it's, it's a let's play, we haven't gotten a single <laughs> lucky roll yet. It's all been uh, unlucky, unfortunately. How much time do we have? Do we have enough time to talk to this guy here? We have a few minutes. All right, we're going to talk to him, guys. Although, we're going to look at his stuff back here first. Jump jams. A glossy magazine. Most able-bodied able men. men. This issue hosts a top ten list. Uh, so, yeah, let's go and talk to him. Welcome to Rivachol. Don't you welcome to Revachol me. My grandfather came here from a 3,000 year old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Every school of thought and government has failed in the city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. It's men like you who keep Revachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. What he means is, fixation on the Revacholian nation makes it harder for Revachol to actually attain self-determination. Oh, come on, man. I just said, uh, welcome to Revachol. Uh, it's a lorry driver thing. I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here, that I should watch myself and behave. But you see, I'm an officer of the RCM. It's actually my job to make sure you behave. I would advise you to remember that. Silence. The air between them becomes tense. Your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. You do make a cute couple. You know that? The lieutenant exhales and resumes his regular calmness. Whatever you say, officers. <laughs> oh man, oh man, that's great. Look at that guy go. I haven't seen anything that funny in a while. God damn. <laughs> Thanks for that, but no, it's not mine. He doesn't live in Martinez. Oh, not much anymore. I'm here to pick up some cargo, but uh, the dock workers are on strike, so... Uh... It's a sit and wait on your ass situation. The strike? <laughs> I'd have been at it for a while. A month. Two months, maybe. But this here is just the last week or so. Apples. Apples is exactly the kind of thing you'd say if you had something to hide. Look, as detective, I come from a long line of lorry men. We got ancient rights and privileges. Oh, I'm here to pick up a load of fucking apples, man. 
Just regular Koiko Pictapples. Damn, you're not gonna get more out of him on this. He's put up the wall of racism. Oh yeah, they're a big deal. My great-grandfather was a carter, had a royal license and everything. We've tried to hold on to our privileges. Sure fucking is. We have a guild and everything, huh? Very ancient. Very prestigious. Goddamn right. They've been trying to fuck us out of our heritage in the name of profit. But when they try to replace us, they'll regret it. Huh. Trusting street thugs with their goods is going to fuck him right up the ass. Mark my words. Generations of practice ain't no laughing matter. Now, we could have asked him for a cigarette, but he wouldn't have given it to us because we pissed him off. <laughs> he would have been holding a cigarette line saying it's his last one and stuff, but he actually will give you a cigarette if you support his racist views. I was wondering how we knew he was racist just by looking at him. Yeah, that it just said racist <laughs> lorry driver or whatever. That's his name. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when it's your name. True. <laughs> so let's go ahead and pick up this money here. Money. Uh, we won't examine this truck here. I'm going to try and reduce a little bit some of the stuff we're doing here. But this is his truck, and it's full of like racist paraphernalia, paraphernalia um, all over it. Like all over it, you'll guess find. that's why he's racist Larry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that his name? Is that his he's name? Or did you just... driver. Yeah, you just gave him his a name. His name is racist Larry the lorry driver. <laughs> yeah. That's fitting. Uh, our encyclopedia, we might actually be able to do this about the statue and learn more about it. Uh, I, I do want to see what's in the back of this, though. We'll investigate this real quick. And this is the last thing we're going to do here, guys. Oh, just some money. Oh, I thought there was going to be like a monkey or We'll something. take that. Oh, we got a new... This is our first new set of clothing, isn't it? Life beater. I don't think we've had any clothing yet. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and wear it. Uh, this is a plus one for physical instrument, which... Is a lot better than what we're currently wearing, which has a penalty associated to it. We get the plus one to concept conceptualization, but a negative one to suggestion because of our unsavory odor. <laughs> so we have a lot more difficulty trying to, you know, suggest things to people. So let's go and change our shirt, and we're stronger. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, so I, I want to say that puts us at, yeah, we're at four for physical instrument now. So might see him piping up a little bit more often. With see? his muscles. So yeah, the clothes play a huge role in the game, guys. Uh, you always want to have like a lot of different sets of clothing that change them out so you can get through certain white checks and stuff. Uh, that's all we're going to be doing in this playthrough, guys. In the... Oh, we'll see what this is. Oh, because they spelled it with three T's for the store name, which is silly. So in the next episode, I guess we'll figure out what's going on with the strike here. We'll talk to some of these people here and see if we can't get in, because that's what we really need to do. We need to get in here. And hopefully we're able to, because uh, this is the more difficult route in, depending on your stats, of course. Uh, but I think we could have difficulty getting in this way as well. I know we're strong. Well, the problem is we're more of a generalist. And so generalists have difficulty, I've noticed. Uh, like, you have more avenues open to you to mm -hmm. try like, you know, you'll have, like, more, maybe 40-something, 50-something percent white check chances. But you have such low ch chances on those that you're more often to fail. It's like a flip of the coin. Yeah, so with, like, the higher levels, you have less avenues to succeed. But the ones that you do have, you're more likely to be successful at those because they're, like, 80-something percent or whatever. 97 percent or whatever it is. Uh, so we'll see if we can get in there. But we're really not the strongest of characters either. So I don't know. We'll have to see you guys. Uh, but I hope you did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next episode, and thanks for watching.